my boyfriend broke up with me about a week later after arguing because he felt like Chris was too close on me. Well, I'm the boyfriend, but of course I broke up with her. But she don't want to mention that she was cheating before we even ran into this problem. Yo, 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 Michael T. Porter here. Welcome to Rooted in Music TV, where everything that we talk about, everything that we discuss is rooted in music. I got another bomb episode for y'all, but before I begin, y'all hit that like button, that subscribe button, that share button, hit that notification bell so you know when I'm dropping. Pass me around, pass me around Facebook, Instagram, and all other social media platforms. If you guys want to support the channel, Cash App, Dallas Sign, Michael U.S. Also check out my Spotify podcast, the 250 Gemstones Culture Podcast. Link is in the description. Y'all stay and watch the whole video. Music lovers, we need to talk. Chris Brown, let me see you can run, run it. It's out in the news again because he's taking seductive pictures with his female fans and they boyfriends, they fiancés, and they husbands. They are all mad. They are sad. And they ain't having, they pissed off. And a lot of them paid, uh, it's a thousand dollars for females to go backstage and get a picture with Chris Brown. Chris Brown, my mother effing nigga. But I got a, a couple of videos I wanna play for y'all and we're gonna dive into this thing. Music lovers, let's go. Charging fans $1,000 for meet and greets after his concerts. Some have a problem with it. Let's talk about it with our experts. So which one of you Hating on uh, Chris Brown for this $1,000 per fan meet and greet. He's getting criticism for. I ain't mad at him, man. If Halle Berry did it, I might I might pay $2,500, man. <laughs> or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking about doing I'm, I'm thinking about doing me one for $10. Seeing if the fans <laughs> want to picture with me, bro. But you know what, man? You're worth what people will pay you. And I can't right. say, on a serious note, I'm not... I'm a fan of Chris Brown, but not on that level. But if Michael Jackson and Prince were still alive and I had the chance to meet one of my heroes, oh, I definitely would pay $1,000 to meet Mike or meet Prince and take a picture because that's something you'll never forget and you probably won't ever get that chance again. So I think people need to stop hating, let people enjoy their lives. You don't know, somebody might be balling. $1,000 not anything to them. People spend money on on less. You know, my, people might spend $1,000 on lottery tickets and win nothing. So at least they have this memory of one of their heroes taking pictures. So if Chris can get it, I salute him, man. Get your money. And a lot of people are also complaining about just how close he is and personal and intimate with the people in the pictures. Blaine, you've seen some of those pictures. Your thoughts on it? Uh, listen, it's called the VIP experience, man. You know what I mean? Some people want to be up close, front, and personal. And this, like like Todd said, uh, this is uh, this is not unheard of. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan charged people to play basketball with him one on one all the time, and I think. You know, as an artist in any art form, it's, you know, the show is usually not over when you get off stage, man. And then by charging those people too, you know, it keep people from being weird that don't want to, you know, don't really want anything, just kind of hanging around, looking out and, you know, being goofy, want to pick you up and, you know what I mean? Just acting all, you know, goofy, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, the show does, doesn't end on stage for me personally because, like, you know, you know, typically you're selling merchandise and stuff like that. Then you got those people that just want to hang around and take pictures but don't want to buy nothing else. And they trying to stop you from, you know, making the rest of your money. At the, of course, he's an artist that doesn't really necessarily need that. But and then again, we don't really know his financial situation. You know what I mean? I just heard on the news he was being sued uh, not too long ago for a concert that you know, he was supposed to attend and didn't show up to and things like that. So, you know, we don't we don't know where he had or what, what his ties is with the record label, but it's business until the show is over. It's the VIP experience. And, you know, I don't blame him, man. I don't blame him. And Tom, what he said cake. is, you know, he wanted to, I guess, confront some of the weak ass artists out there. So I, I'm thinking he thinks it may be other artists who are not getting the amount he's getting, and there could be some jealousy there. Your thoughts? There's always going to be jealousy, but uh, like Young Blue, 
Alabama, Alabama spoke up and said, you know, he, he would want that type of memory, but you're always going to have haters. And like Blaine kind of said, you don't know his financial situations. You could be up today and, and down tomorrow. So I don't think you should turn down any business opportunities because entertainment is fickle. You know, you would, something new music might change. Chris Brown's getting old. One of these days, he might be considered lame to the young people and not be making as much money. So you have to get money where you can. I know a lot of artists get paid to show up in the club. I think the OJs, if, don't quote me, I think they were charging like $70,000 years ago to show up at an event. Why wouldn't they get that type of money? They didn't write any songs, so you have to supplement your money somehow, and you have to get it while the getting is good, because entertainment is fickle, like I said, and you shouldn't pay attention to any of those haters. Now, I would be hesitant about the young ladies getting so close to me. I might make them sign a little something, because they might come back <laughs> later and say, oh, Chris fondled me and touched me. Like, no, you signed this waiver saying, you know, you were down with whatever we were doing, but that's my only pause, but Get your money. During the pandemic, artists didn't make any money. They didn't tour. Uh, a lot of them didn't put out music. So you have to supplement that money, income, that income some way. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Chris Brown. And then people been doing it for years. You got Cameo. You know what I mean? Where people are being paid to, yeah. you know, artists are being paid to give personal shout outs via the yeah. internet, personalizing them with loved ones' names and uh, celebrations or whatever they maybe have, have coming. And then, hey, everybody can't do that. You know what I mean? Everybody don't you know, it's not that big of an artist where they can get, you know, the influx of, I want a personal experience with you. You know what I mean? So it just goes to his stardom, his pandemonium, and things like that. So, you know what I mean? Like I say, hey man, you gotta do it. We, we're in the artist industry, and, and it don't stop to the to the end. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's a lot of weirdos out here hanging around. Like I said, just want to hang around and what talk to people. What kind of fans you got, Blame? You've been talking about I mean, weirdos fans, all Well, you know, weird. according to Facebook. <laughs> but, of course. My boyfriend broke up with me about a week later after arguing because he felt like Chris was too close on me. Well, I'm the boyfriend. But, of course, I broke up with her. But she don't want to mention that she was cheating before we even ran into this problem. The Chris Brown thing was the icing on the cake. And as far as Chris Brown go, these light skinned you know what? I'm a Shania. Ain't you do not you? get on the internet and try to act like, oh, you don't need me. You don't need me. You needed me when you moved to my house. You needed me when I had to co-sign on the car for you. You needed me then, but then you go meet Chris Brown and I broke up with your cheating ass. And the main reason that I broke up with you is because you've been cheating. This Chris Brown thing is just some extra bullshit that I've been dealing with since I met you. You feel what I'm saying? So the, the whole point, the icing on the cake is, I'm not finna play these internet games with you, for starters. You're not, oh, oh, everybody can rah-rah and Chris, run it, run it. Like, he corny. So if I see him, if I meet and greet with him, you already know what's up. So you need to stop playing with me. This nigga said Chris Brown is corny. Uh, First off, that song was made when he was a child. He was 15, uh... You willing to beat up Chris Brown? Why you want to fight the man? Outside of your girl, why you want to fight Chris? Okay, you don't like his song. You not liking a nigga's song or thinking he's corny for his song doesn't give you the shouldn't giving a man should not give a man the momentum to go beat up another man. I've never. There's a lot of songs, even from my favorite artists, I don't like. That means I'm gonna run up on the man. That song was whack. Kapayao punch nigga down. These internet people is weird. A lot of these weird ass couples they. He said he's not about to go on the internet and do this internet back and forth, and he just did it. And acting like you didn't need me because you definitely needed me. Would y'all like my opinion? Would y'all like some of this Rooted in Music TV commentary? Well, of course you do. That's why your ass is here. I, I, I'm, I'm, I think the guys that allow their go, girls to go around Chris Brown or jackasses. This is my this is my mother effing tape. See, I, see, I've been around. I know women. Thank God, I was able to uh, uh, control my lust, con the, my uh, control my uh, desires. Right? I don't, I don't usually talk like this. I've been talking like this since I've been in the south. I'm originally from Sacramento, that mighty West Coast, California. Shout out, y'all. Shout out, mother effing Dallas, where I'm at now. My second home, New Orleans. But anyway. My desires for them breasts and them hips and them feet and them legs. Woo! Any man that let their woman, this is a lesson, especially if you a young nigga, but if you are man of any age, do not let your woman go around a famous man, especially 
if he's an R&B singer. Do not let your females around and R&B niggas. I'm R&B niggas are whores. They are womanizers and they're rich and they are the men that all the other girls want. Women want to compete. Uh, women are mo lazy for the most part, but for the right man, uh, the multitude of women would compete for a Chris Brown. They would compete for uh, uh, what's the other one? Trey Songs. They will compete for Tank. They will if R. Kelly was out. Them hoes will be competing and dropping their panties for R. Kelly because they want to be that main bitch. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the competition and it's the lifestyle that they can provide. Women always want more. They're like children. They always want more. You can be a good dude having a good job. You spoil this girl. That doesn't matter when a man like Chris Brown comes around. Do not let your girls around an R&B dude. Any man, all them guys that got mad, them fiance, I'm breaking up with my wife. She's a woman. And once you understand women, she's supposed to be drooling over Chris Brown. What you thought was going to happen? She's going to get a life, a once-in-a-lifetime experience with one of the uh, the greatest talents that the world has ever seen. He's rich, and he's still fairly young. He's only 35. He, he can bang out another 15 years. 50 is when, you know, really starts slowing down. He can bang out another 15 years. And he's going strong at 35. Still got the dance moves. Him, Sierra. Sierra's in her 40s. They still going along with the technology and the eating habits that we have today and the cosmetics. People are being beautiful and youthful a little bit longer, you know. So, not because uh, back in the day everybody was smoking cigarettes. A lot of people got knocked off because of cigarettes. But people are healthier overall. People, I, I feel, people are more healthier. So he got plenty more years, at least another decade. Forty-five. Usher's, Usher's what? Forty. Usher's in his uh, earlier mid for Usher. You think so? What happened with Kiki Palmer? Did y'all see what happened with Kiki Palmer? Do not let your women around a R&B nigga. And I'm a uh, R&B nigga myself. I got I, 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 I write. I be writing some songs about women. I, I could write some songs. Woo! Don't do it. These women, these men are whores. These men are confident. These men know women. They're everything that a woman wants. Rich. They're confident. They're the man that every other woman wants, and you. And and at the end of the day, the dude's handsome. You know these these guys are good looking. They're rich. Your girl's gonna drop her panties. You the dumbass. The boyfriend, the fiance, the husband who allowed their little kittens around. That lion out there, which is Chris Brown. You the dumbass. You should be mad at yourself for spending a thousand dollars. And you damn near gave your little kitten to this goddamn lion. That's your fault, nigga. And you grown nigga. You grown nigga should know better. You youngsters trying to figure out women. I know today is even more complex how to figure out women. I know it's hard, but <sighs> niggas in their late thirties and forties, especially, but even in your late twenties, late twenties and up, you should know how women operate. And if you don't know, that's cool. That's why I'm here. I'm letting you know. Don't do it. You gonna leave your. You heard what? Uh, and and here's the thing. How you gonna be mad at Chris Brown? The, the nigga called Chris Brown a uh, corny, but he's a rich nigga. He said these hoes ain't loyal. Talking about your girlfriend. Your girlfriend is a hoe. You, that nigga's girlfriend been cheating on him. When a rich nigga wants you, and oh, hold on, get the lyrics right. And oh, when a rich nigga wants you, and your nigga can't do nothing for you. These hoes ain't loyal. Got over a billion views. When a rich nigga wants you and your nigga can't do nothing for you. See, I know, I know. These hoes ain't loyal, told you. Just got rich. Took a broke nigga bitch. I can make a broke bitch rich. But I don't fuck with broke bitches. Got a white girl with some fake titties. I took her to the bay with me. Eyes closed, smoking marijuana, rolling up that Bob Marley. I'm a rock star. She wanna do drugs, smoke weed, get drunk. She wanna see a nigga trap. She wanna F all the rappers. Do you understand that Chris Brown was honest about the lifestyle he lived? He got the access to the weed, he got the access to Lamborghinis, mansions, private jets. And you let your woman around him, you the dumbass. Because Usher told you too. Uh, don't leave your girl around me. True player for real. Ask my nigga for real.
do not leave your girl around me. And R. Kelly said that too. I don't know what's going on with these niggas when they be uh, leaving their girls around me. I'm a flirt. When you walk up in the club, I'm a flirt. R. Kelly told you what kind of men he is and the type of men like him are. They getting hoes after hoes after hoes. And your little hoe ass girlfriend went right along with the program. Y'all flood my comments. Rooted in Music TV family. Y'all let me know who, who was wrong. The woman having her first time experience around a rich womanizer who has everything at his fingertips. Or the man sending his woman out there to the wolves. Who was wrong? Woman taking seductive pictures. Or the man damn near giving his woman to the damn wolves out there. Them R&B wolves. 250 capital G. Who did the music TV? I'm gone.